Hey everyone, this is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. And today we're going to be talking about what I think is a really interesting topic, and that's why you can't just simply brute force a Bitcoin private key. So say you have a wallet that you lost the keys to, or you uh, had a fire and your seed phrase burned up, or maybe more nefariously, you're out there trying to steal somebody else's Bitcoin. Don't do that. Um, but we're going to talk about why this is impossible to do. And we're going to be doing some interesting math. Uh, and there's a simulation that I have available on my website. It's a little program that I wrote called PK Time that shows you using uh, any device you have laying around uh, why you simply can't brute force Bitcoin private keys. So first, we need to talk a little bit about binary numbers and understanding how they work to understand some of the math behind this problem. So what we're used to in our daily lives is a decimal system or base 10. That means for every digit in a number or every place, you have the possible digits of 0 through 9. So for example, with the number 100, you have 0 in the 1's place, 0 in the 10's place, and 1 in the 100's place. And it just so happens that this number works out to be an even power of 10, and that is 10 squared. But with binary, when we're dealing with computers, you have just simply on and off switches, the uh, digits 0 or the digit 1. So for example, to represent the number 18 in binary, we have 10010. And that is 0 in the 1's place, 1 in the 2's place, 0 in the 4 and 8's place, and 1 in the 16's place. So as you can see, each place as we go up in the number of digits in our number is actually a power of 2 rather than a power of 10. So for example, uh, 10000 is 2 to the 4th or 16, so there's another one that's an even power of the base that we're using in our number system. So now let's talk about sizing key spaces. So for example, let's say we're going to have an 8-bit private key for some crypto system. Well, that means that we have eight places in our number, and that means we have a limited number of combinations for uh, what those private keys can be. And it turns out, since we have eight possible slots, and each slot can contain uh, either the digit 0 or 1, we have 2 to the 8th power as the total number of available keys in our key space. And that works out to the number 256. So if we're using an 8-bit private key, we only have 256 possible keys. Now that's pretty small. I mean, anyone with a, even a Raspberry Pi or a microcontroller or a cell phone could, in a split second, uh, iterate through all of those keys and steal your money. So that's not very secure. Now let's think about a 16-bit key space. That is 2 to the 16th, which works out to 65,536. Now we only added eight digits to our key space, or eight bits, but the amount of possible keys dramatically increased. So it turns out that as you increase the number of bits in a key space, the number of possible keys actually increases exponentially. The number goes up dramatically every time you add a bit onto the size of your key space. So now when we're talking about Bitcoin, we're using 256 bit private keys. And 256 bits might not seem like a lot, but when you factor this in as a power of two, the number is unfathomably large. This gives us around 1.15 times 10 to the 77th power possible keys. To give you an idea of this scale, because humans are really bad at imagining large numbers, this is somewhere on the order of magnitude as the number of atoms that are thought to be in the observable universe. I mean, when you think about the number of atoms just contained in your own hand, the number is mind-bogglingly large. So this is just an impossible to imagine number of possible Bitcoin private keys. Now, you're, you might be thinking, even with this really gigantic number that we're talking about, aren't computers really good at dealing with large numbers and doing repetitive operations? Well, yes, they are. I mean, computers are really good at things like brute force guessing and just iterating over numbers. 
but it turns out that this number is so large the computer simply can't deal with it in any way that's practical or possible. So when I wrote PK time, what this program does is two different things. The first thing is it will actually estimate the number of uh, operations that can occur per second on the device that you're running it on. So it will use some uh, small key sizes and create a bunch of samples and actually do Bitcoin key pair generations. And then it will come up with an average time for one operation, which you can easily convert uh, using a calculator into the number of possible uh, key pair operations per second. So if you actually want to run this on your laptop or even run it on a little Raspberry Pi, you could compile it and do that. And what this will do then is when it comes to numbers that are too big for the computer to actually compute, it'll simply estimate out from there using that number of operations. So let's take a look at an estimated cracking time for a Bitcoin key running my own personal laptop. When we run this simulation, it quickly becomes apparent why it's impossible to brute force a Bitcoin private key. Uh, doing a key that is 28 bits, only 28 bits, takes on the order of a couple minutes using a pretty fast PC with a modern Intel i5 processor. You go up to 36 bits, which isn't a whole lot of increase in the number of bits. Now it takes days to iterate through all of the keys and try to guess. Go up to 44 bits and you're talking years to estimate, uh, or to guess rather, a, a private key that uh, matches an address for you. And when you get to 256 bits, which you have with Bitcoin private keys, approximately three times 10 to the 64th power years. This is beyond the scope of comprehension for a human being, how long it would take to actually guess through all the keys and try to find a matching address on a normal PC that you can go out and buy. And this is a pretty high-end PC too. I mean, I do a lot of video editing and coding and need something fast, and there's no way that this computer would be able to guess a Bitcoin key. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, yes, okay, that's a home PC, but what about a giant network of computers? What about the world's best supercomputers? Surely there is a government facility out there somewhere that is working 24-7 to crack people's keys uh, and break Bitcoin or break AES-256 encryption and all of these sort of nefarious things that they might be working on. Well, you can rest assured that the math does not work out in their favor. I ran this simulation again using the other option in PK time, which is you can give PK time as a command line argument a total number of operations per second. So, IBM Summit is one of the fastest supercomputers in the world now. It can do petaflops per second, like just billions and billions of operations per second. Now, you can crack a 64-bit key using a computer like that in minutes. So we used to think that 64-bit keys, maybe 20 years ago, were actually pretty secure and the computers wouldn't be able to deal with them. But it turns out that can happen in minutes. But the exponential scale shows itself again when you talk about 128-bit keys and the 256-bit keys used in Bitcoin. For a 128-bit key to be brute forced uh, would take 5 to the times 10 to the 13th power years. So still, just an unfathomably long time. And for Bitcoin 256-bit keys, approximately 1 times 10 to the 52nd power years. Now, to put this all into perspective when you're dealing with these giant powers of 10, the age of the known universe is estimated to be about 13 billion years, which is 13 times 10 to the 9th power. 10 to the 9th power compared to 10 to the 52nd power is a gigantic gap. And we're talking here about the world's best supercomputer. I've even run this simulation uh, assuming that we could use the Bitcoin network's hashing power, which is about 75 exahashes per second to do this, and the numbers are nowhere, nowhere close. It's incredible to think about the fact that even the world's best computers and the, pushing the theoretical limits of computing could not do this in anywhere near even the lifetime of the universe. That's how big these numbers are and how impossible it is to just simply brute force guess a Bitcoin key. 
If your Bitcoin keys are going to be attacked, it's going to be through bad implementations of a wallet. It's going to be through your own lack of operational security. Uh, but if you're following good practices and using good software, nobody is going to be able to spin up an Azure VM and guess a bunch and try to steal your money. The odds are just so far against being able to do that. And the last thought that you might find interesting. You can see here the difference um, between a simple home PC that's even really powerful compared to what we had 10 years ago and the world's best supercomputers. You know, it might take tens of years to brute force a 64-bit key on a, my PC where it only takes minutes with the world's best supercomputer. And so you might be asking yourself, well, you know, we thought 20 years ago, 10 years ago, that 64-bit keys were really secure, and now they're crackable in minutes. Why isn't the same going to be true for Bitcoin, for 256-bit keys? Well, there's two things. Again, we're talking about an exponential difference. Many, many, many orders of magnitude in the number of operations it would take to go through 64-bit keys versus 256. And it actually turns out that even if we could build a theoretical computer that could guess incredibly fast compared to what we have available now, we actually go over the theoretical limits of computing to be able to exhaust a 256-bit key space. There are actually limits to what we could even achieve with the best theoretical computers because of the amount of energy required to go through all these operations. We as human beings on Earth, and maybe even just the available energy in the solar system, would not touch what it would take to do all these operations. Because to flip bits in a computer and do these guesses takes energy. And the amount of energy that it takes when you're going through such a large set of guesses goes over what we could even do theoretically. So again, if you're worried about somebody cracking your keys, your keys are safe. That's the math and the scale behind private keys of this size. Now again, this doesn't just apply to Bitcoin and ECDSA, but it also applies to things like AES encryption. So if you're using a piece of software that properly implements AES to encrypt your hard drives or encrypt important data, nobody's gonna be able to steal those keys uh, simply by guessing. If you're using a software implementation that does AES properly, your data is safe from everyone but you. So I just think this is really fascinating and the scale behind this level of cryptography is just hard to even understand. But uh, it's amazing what we can do and it's amazing what Bitcoin provides in terms of security compared to other things. Because with Bitcoin, uh, you're never giving anyone your private key. You only have a public key. And, and for them to try and guess your private key isn't going to work. Now again, I have a piece of software that I wrote in C called PK Time that I use to uh, create some of the data for this tutorial. It's free and open source and available on the Chain Tutorials website. So uh, please download it, compile it, and try it out on your device. And uh, even try entering some numbers uh, for theoretical computers. And you'll see that even when we're well beyond what you might think that we could do with a computer, 256-bit keys are safe. And as always, there's an article on the Chain Tutorials website that accompanies this video and actually has uh, the data sets that I generated using uh, PK Time, and I encourage you to check that out. So I hope you found this tutorial interesting and informative, and as always, thank you very much for listening.